Good morning again, sunshines. I told you that Mr. Hatfield is back with a vengeance, and he is. He has a pointer. So today, when we do it in wisdom, you'll have a special treat. A pointer is going to be helping guide our learning. He's so excited about it. All right. What we're going to do is we're going to finish up lesson 22. Remember, um, Monday, we wrote our pre-writing for what would you do with a tale like this? You and your partner had a book and you chose a particular um, feature that you wanted to write about and you found evidence in the text. So we have our pre-writing. So today... We're going to finish that lesson and then we're going to start lesson 23, which is where we're actually going to do the writing on your hamburger paper. So remember, we talked about what was happening in what would you do with a tale like this? So. I want you to think back to what you and your partner did Monday. You had to look closely at the key details and main topics. So let's look at our chart over here. Mr. Hatfield, use your pointer. Remember our key details. And we came up with a main topic for each of the different sections of the story. So you remember doing that. So how did looking closely at each section with those key details and main topics how did that help you figure out what was happening in the story? I want you to think about that for a second. Well, I think it helped me, Mr. Hatfield, because then I was able to put all of those sections together and come up with the main topic that animals have unique features. I agree. I think by looking at each main topic, it told us the overall main topic of the book. Yep. So that's what you should have been thinking about. So here's what I want you to do. We're going to do a little movement early this morning. I want you to stand up from where you are. And I want you to act out each of these animals and how it moves. Are you ready? Monkey, go. All right, Mr. Hatfield. Monkey, go. Good job. All right, next one. A hair. Remember, we talked about this one. A hair. How does a hair move? Okay, Mr. Hatfield, go. Like, am I a bunny? Like, am I... A hair uh, is a, a hair rabbit. It is a rabbit. So, so should I hop? What do you, th what how do you, you think? How do you think a rabbit moves? <laughs> a rabbit doesn't run. A rabbit hops. Uh-huh. All right. Now, what about this one? A dog. Think about how a dog moves and show us. All right. Hit it. Go. Oh, you can't see him. Hold on. Let me get down here. There he goes. There goes the dog. <laughs> all right. You all did amazing. Now, what we are going to do is we're going to talk about a very special word. That word is mammal. Everybody say mammal. Mammal. Very good. I want you to think first, what is a mammal? You may not have ever heard that word and you may not know, but some of you have heard it. What do you think a mammal is? Well, I know using my clues, a mammal has to be an animal because why would Miss Metz and Mr. Hatfield have you act out all of these things if I didn't want you to know what a mammal was? So I'm thinking a mammal is an animal and I'm going back to what I've already heard about or what I know about those animals, a monkey and a hare and a dog. All of those don't lay eggs. They actually have live babies. They have live babies. So that must also help me figure out what a mammal is. So a mammal has live babies. Oh, and I'm going to go back to what each of them had. Mr. Hatfield, a dog and a hare and a monkey. They all have something on their skin. What's that called? Hair. Yes, they have hair on their skin. So, or fur, which if you look at us, we both have hair too. So that must mean, uh, we must be mammals. And 
the last thing I want you to think about is how those babies eat. So remember we talked about those live babies, they eat a certain way. Well, they drink milk to begin with. So they can't just go out like the um, seahorse and suck up their food. They have to eat milk first before they are able to um, eat real food. So mammals, there are three things I want you to know about a mammal. Number one, they have live babies. They don't lay eggs. They have live babies. Number two, they have hair on their skin. So they have hair. They don't have feathers. They don't have scales. They have hair. And number three is they drink milk. When they first are babies, they drink milk. So what I want you to do is I want you to take a look. I can see it focused in. Here are these things that I just talked about. A mammal has hair. So guess what? You're a mammal. A mammal can have live babies. They don't lay eggs. Guess what? You're a mammal. A mammal is warm blooded. We didn't talk about that one. That one means that our blood inside our body can keep us warm. Think about a snake. How many of you have seen a snake on the side of the road before? Yeah, usually they're hit because we're hoping this Mets hit them because they can't handle snakes. But guess why they're there? Because they're cold blooded. Their body, their blood inside their body can't warm up. So they have to use the sun. That's why they're on the road. They are warming up in the sun and usually pavement is warmer. So they're warming up their blood. So we as mammals don't have to do that. Our body stays warm because our blood is warm. So the three things that you're going to Now let's make it four because we learned a different thing. The four things you're going to know about a mammal is a mammal has hair. A mammal can have live babies and can drink milk at the beginning. And a mammal is warm blooded. All right, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to flash some cards to you. I even have little pictures on there. So I want you to decide, is the picture that I'm flashing a mammal? Does it have hair? Does it uh, have live babies? Do, do the babies drink milk? And is it warm blooded? Or is it not a mammal? So Mr. Hatfield's going to hold each of these up. And you are going to determine if these are mammals or not. All right. Are you ready? Flush that card. Pig. I want you to think for just a second. And then I'm going to count to three. And I want you to yell out mammal or not a mammal. One, two, three. Mammal. This one is a mammal because a pig does not um, lay eggs. A pig is a mammal because it gives live birth. All right. Excellent job. Next one. Look at it. On the count of three, tell me mammal or not a mammal. One, two, three. Mammal. I hope you just said it because remember when he acted out like a monkey? That's exactly what a monkey does. A monkey has hair. Excellent job. All right, next one. That's dog. Are you ready? One, two, three. Mammal. Because a dog gives live birth. It has hair and it's warm blooded. All right, here's your next one. Oh, oh. We'll see. Alligator. What do you think? Mammal or not a mammal? One, two, three. Not a mammal. And do you know why? Because an alligator has scales and an alligator is also cold blooded. So if you've ever noticed an alligator will smother itself up on a rock, it's because it's sunbathing. It's trying to warm its blood up. So that one is not a mammal. One, two, three. Not a mammal because it lays eggs. Snakes lay eggs. And how I know this is I've seen it. It's gross. So, okay, next one. Spider. Is a spider a mammal? One, two, three. Not a mammal because a spider lays eggs. Think about Charlotte's Web. In Charlotte's Web, Charlotte is the spider and she has a sack full of eggs. So that is not a mammal. All right, next one. two, three. Mammal, because it has hair and it gives live birth. Oh, a hair. One, two, 
three. That's a mammal because it has live babies and it also has hair. A duck. Ooh, this one's hard. One, two, three. Not a mammal. Did you know that ducks lay eggs? And did you know that ducks don't have hair? They have feathers. And that, what's, that is what makes us different than ducks. All right, last one. A fish. One, two, three. Not a mammal because fish, uh, number one, live in water. They have scales, not hair. And they don't have um, uh, warm blood. Excellent job. Okay, so now what we're going to do, you all did an amazing job on that. So now we are going to move on to lesson 23. So let me get my situation fixed here. Mr. Hatfield's ready with his pointer. Good gravy. Okay, hold on. Miss Metz didn't fix it like I thought I did. Ah! Hold on. There we go. Hold on. Mr. Hatfield likes the pointer a little too much and it's annoying. Okay, first thing I want you to do is take a look and tell me how many standards, oh, good gravy children, how many standards are we going to hit in this lesson today? Are you ready? Are you ready? We're going to hit how many? 11 standards. Mr. Hatfield, point to that star. Oh, don't mind if I do. That star. star. Yes, this that star. star. This star. You are going to tell somebody at your home today, you are about to hit a fourth grade standard. We are going to write, and you are going to hit a fourth grade writing standard. What? You're only in first grade. This is amazing. Okay, so now let's move on. And I want you to think, we just did one of these yesterday. You better be remembering. Tell me something you know about a collage. Shout it out. Tell me something you know. Yeah, it has paper. What else? Okay, it's paper on paper, kind of like we do with our Christmas tree. What else? It represents something very good. All of those things are exactly right. So a collage is when we have art using different types of paper. And we did that yesterday when we made our Christmas trees. So what I'd like for you to do is this is a page from our text, okay? Obviously, this is the hare's ears. What I want you to do is I want you to tell me something that you notice about the paper the author and illustrator used to create the ears. So look carefully at those ears. And I want you to think, what do you notice about uh, what the author used to create that? Well, the first thing that I'm noticing is I see what kind of looks like uh, fuzz, if you will. So to me, that looks like thinner paper, maybe even um, a paper that is crinkled up that's maybe finer. What do you notice, Mr. Hatfield? I'm seeing a lot of, I'm noticing a lot of wrinkles. Uh huh. So it almost looks like the paper is, like you said, wrinkled a little yep. bit and crinkled. So. And I feel like this one may be thicker paper. Mm -hmm than this, because you can kind of see through the paper here and you don't really see through the paper here. So those are some things that we notice. What do you think that these ears are gonna feel like? So like if I said, hey, go touch those ears. What do you think those ears would feel like? Okay, what do you think, Mr. Hatfield? I think they're gonna, they're gonna feel pretty soft. I agree. I think they would feel soft. I think this, is what makes me think they would be soft. So I think they would probably feel pretty soft. So soft or fluffy or furry or just real nice. So that, when we talk about words like soft or furry, is describing the texture of something. I know you've talked about this in art with Miss Smith, the texture of something. So when we hear soft, hard, bumpy, um, smooth, rough, all of those things are texture. So everybody say the word texture. Very good. So we 
are going to add our word texture up on our vocabulary chart. So, Mr. Hatfield, it's right there on the side. He is going to add the word textured with blue. So, our word texture means how an object feels or how it might feel if you can't touch it. So, what you're thinking about when you hear the word texture is how an object feels based on what it looks like. So I want you to look around your house. We're going to look around the room. I want you to look around wherever you're sitting, and I want you to find a couple things that have different textures or different feels. And I want you to tell me and Mr. Hatfield what texture it has. All right. So everybody take three seconds. Go find something, touch it, and then come back and tell me how it feels. All right, so we're going to do the same. Ready? Go. All right, I've got mine. Are you ready? So the first thing I have is our book. Now, when I feel this, it feels smooth. It doesn't feel bumpy. It definitely doesn't feel soft. When I think soft, I think, oh, something I'd want to cuddle up with. This doesn't feel soft. It feels smooth. It feels smooth. All right, Mr. Hatfield, what'd you find? Well, I found something a little different. I found Hunter's Seat. So when I feel this, the top has kind of bumps in it. So it feels a little rough up top and it's pretty hard. This is something I don't want to get hit with. So, so the texture or how those feel um, was different. So now I want you to tell me, what did you feel? Did you feel something that was soft or smooth or rough or bumpy, maybe even sharp or furry or I'm running out of texture words. Did you feel something like that? So that's your job today, too. I want you to find different textures around your house and tell somebody, oh, guess what? This texture, surprise them with that word, is and tell them all that. Um, okay. Now, let's move on. So, I'm going to remind you. I'll put you over here. Our big question. Remember, it's our um, telescope question. What we're going to have to answer by the end of this module is, what can we discover about animals' unique features? So, our job right now, our uh, binoculars, our binocular view is going to be this right here. How do animals use the same feature in unique ways? Because we've talked about in our book, lots of animals have tails, but do they all use them the same way? Nope. So our question for today is, ooh, we're taking a deeper exploration. That's our, um, our microscope. We are going to uh, figure it out today. We're going to be able to answer this question today. What does a deeper exploration of informational text features. Oh, there's that word text features. You know about text features. So text features reveal in our book, what would you, or what do you do with a tail like this? So I want you to take a look. We talked about the young hair the other day. We talked about the young hair. Remember it was uh, watercolored or painted in 1502 and it was by a B. The um, painter was A D. What I want you to do is I want you to look at the texture or the feel of this hair. I want you to pretend to pet that hair. I want you to tell me how do you think the different parts of the hair feels. How do you think its ears feel? What do you think, Mr. Hatfield? I think it's going to be pretty soft. I agree, soft. Ooh, how do you think the feet feel? I think those might be a little bony. Yeah, I think bony, maybe even sharp, sharp depending on how, uh -huh, how you got there. Ooh, what do you think about its uh, back and its legs? Fluffy. Yes, I totally agree. Very furry. All right. So what did the artist do to show that the ears would be soft, the back would be fluffy, 
and the feet might be hard or bony. What do you think the author did to show those different textures? What do you think? Well, I think maybe he drew longer lines on the hair in the back. So to make it look like it's actual hair was longer and fluffier. I think he used shorter lines on the ears to show that they are very fine and very soft. And I think he used darker colors down here to show the um, bones in the, um, the bones in the fingers and, and the sharpness of the claws. Awesome job. Okay, so think about text features. We have a whole lot of them. Help me name them. Text box. Text size. Text shape. Uh, text location. Labels and captions. Index. All of those. We have all of those. So what I want you to do is you're going to look right here at all of these. As you look at each of those, I want you to tell me what text features do you see on those pages? What text features do you see? All right, Mr. Hatfield, what do you see? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. I also see text location. Mm -hmm. It's beside the picture. Oh, over here, I see um, text color. Uh, or bold print. Remember we talked about that? So here I know that this particular word is very important. Uh, let's see. Ooh, I see maybe what would be like a label. I see the illustrations and I know that we're going to learn about noses based on that. So um, I want you to help me figure out what is unique about each of these animals features. So here's what we're going to do. We are going to read that particular part of the book. Mr. Hatfield, why don't you go get a book and we will read about that. So are you ready? Here we go. Platypus. I want you to tell me what are some unique things about this particular um, creature's feature. If you're a platypus, you use your nose to dig in the mud. If you're a platypus, you use your nose to dig in the mud. All right, so what about this? The platypus is a very unusual animal. He lives in streams and ponds and rivers in Australia. It's a mammal, but it lays eggs. Well, that's weird. Its feet are webbed, and the males have poisonous spurs on the backs of their legs. Platypus poison probably wouldn't kill a human, but getting spurred is very painful and can be deadly for some small animals. The, the platypus closes its eyes underwater and uses its sensitive bill to detect the faint electric pulses emitted by its prey. Then, with its bill, it sifts or digs through the mud for these small fish, frogs, and insects. Platypuses are usually about 20 inches long and weigh about five pounds. So what I want you to do is tell me, what is something that you learned just now about a platypus? Mr. Hatfield, tell me something you learned about a platypus. Well, I didn't know it had spurs on the back of their life. I know. Was that not crazy, Sam? Okay. I didn't know that uh, they only weighed five pounds. What else did you know? I didn't know that they were poisonous. I didn't either. Hey, I didn't know that they didn't swim with their eyes open. I don't either when I'm in water. But they use their bill. And the bill is very sensitive to uh, vibrations that other animals make that they might want to eat. I learned it's an animal, but it's a mammal that lays eggs. Isn't that crazy, Town? So we learned some things about the platypus. Now, we're going to read about the hippo. Are you ready? I want you to be able to tell me some things that you learned about a hippo. Ready? Here we go. If you're a hippopotamus, you close your ears when you're under the water. All right. 
You ready to hear something else about that crazy hippo? Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry, say that again. Oh, she is not. Okay, you ready? Ready? The hippopotamus is easily sunburned and spends much of its time underwater. These large animals, nine feet long and weighing 3,000 pounds, live in Africa and graze at night on grass and other plants around the lakes and rivers where they spend most of their times. Hippos close their ears and noses when they go underwater where they can stay as long as 30 minutes. All right. I am ready for you to tell me what you learned about that hippopotamus. What did you learn? Go, Mr. Hatfield. I didn't know that they were nine feet long. No kidding. And they weigh 3,000 pounds. Do you know what that means? It's like a car and a half, sometimes two small cars. That is how much a hippo weighs. Oh, my gracious. Raised on grass at night. I know, right? So I didn't know. They're like me. I close my eyes underwater. And they also close their ears. How amazing would that be? Maybe I should start being like a hippo and go underwater like this. Then I wouldn't have to worry about swimmer's ear or getting uh, salt water in my eyes. I also know uh, that we just learned that hippos, they need sunscreen just like we do because they get sunburned. Did you know that? They get sunburned. How crazy. And they can stay underwater for 30 minutes. First of all, I'm pretty sure a human cannot do that unless they have equipment. 30 minutes underwater. I bet that's where they stay to make sure they don't get sunburned. All right, are you ready? Now, we are going to learn about the chimpanzee. Are you ready? We're going to learn about how they use their tail. Oh, just kidding, feet. Kidding, kidding, kidding. Ha, 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 ha. Here we go. In the back. Mr. Hotfield is struggling. If you're a chimpanzee, you're, uh, let's see here, you feed yourself with your feet. All right, let's learn about the chimpanzee and their feet. Chimpanzees are humans' closest animal relatives. These intelligent animals live in the forests of Africa and are typically five feet tall, hey, like a human, and 135 pounds. Like people, they, are, they have an opposable thumb. There it is. Unlike us, they also have an opposable big toe. I'm not going to take my shoe off, but okay. This allows them to pick up and manipulate things with their feet, just like their hands. They eat fruit, leaves, insects, and the occasional small animal. All right, I'm ready for you to tell me something that you learned about the chimpanzee. Go. I didn't know they were almost five feet tall. And that's like us. And that buddy, just like we did, 135 pounds. Now, something that I something I learned is that they have thumbs like we do, but their toes. Their big toe. They can also use their toes to do things. I also didn't know that they eat fruit, leaves, and small animals. Crazy town. So we have learned a whole lot of things about these particular animals. So we're going to skip writing all of the things that we learned. And here is all the things that we just said. The platypus, uh, they have flat, wide, gray noses, brown bodies, their feet are webbed. The males have poisonous spurs on their back legs and they can use their bill to dig. Uh, the hippopotamus has hair on their ears, crazy town. They have a large gray body. They close their ears when they go underwater. Their skin is easily sunburned, and they close their nose when they go to water, just like humans. And the chimpanzee has brown furry arms. They have hands with fingers, 
and their hands don't have fur, kind of like our hands don't have fur. They're, they feed themselves with their feet and their feet can grasp things like their hands. I challenge you to try that today. See if you can pick some things up with your feet. Mm -hmm. uh, they have an opposable thumb, just like a human, but they also have an opposable big toe, like a thumb, that allows them to pick up and manipulate things. Pretty amazing, huh? So today, what we did was we used text features to learn about those things. We use the illustrations with the label to know that we were going to learn about a particular animal's feature. We use um, a caption as well as text location to know exactly what that animal was doing in the picture. And then we used what might be considered a, we're gonna talk about this tomorrow. This is called the bat text. And we're going to learn more about that tomorrow. Because in each of our next books, it's going to have more information in the back of the book. So we used the back text. Now, here's what I need you to do. We talked about the different types of information that we learn on each of those. We didn't learn a whole lot on this page. We just learned what feature we're going to talk about. We learned something easy and quick about this particular picture. And in the back text, that's where we learned a whole lot more about that particular animal. So in my mind, I used information from each of these text features to get a little more information about the particular animal. So I'm going to remind you, remember our hamburger? You now have a job and your job is to take your pre-writing that we did yet, uh, Monday and it is stapled in your Go notebook with the hamburger. So what you're going to do is you are going to write your topic sentence in the top bun. So you have your hamburger in the top bun. Mr. Hatfield and the pointer are getting on Miss Metz's nerves. So tomorrow he won't have it, okay? Um, so you are going to write the topic sentence in your top bun. Blank are unique features. Some of you wrote tails are unique features. Some of you wrote mouths are unique features. Some of you wrote feet are unique features. Whatever you wrote on that top line is what you're going to write in your topic sentence. Now, remember I told you we're going to do a fourth grade writing standard? Bam, here it is. You have to have detail after detail after detail. How many details did we write? We wrote Three, and it says, <laughs> it says, tails can be used to, tails can be used to, tails can be used to. Guess where you're going to write that? Right here. You're going to write all of those details right here. Now, if you didn't write about tails, don't write about tails on here. You're going to use your um, pre-writing that you already did, and you're going to follow that right on our um, hamburger. Now, your conclusion sentence is at the bottom. Hence, topic sentence at the top, bottom, I mean, conclusion sentence at the bottom. So, you are going to write, tails can be used in different ways. But if you didn't write about tails, don't write tails can be used in a different way. Write, mouths can be used in, a different, in different ways or whatever your topic sentence is. So, you're going to use your pre-writing to copy exactly what's on that paper to your hamburger. Thumb in the air if you understand. If you don't understand, have anybody that's at home text me 
and I will explain it to them. Okay. But you know what we do and I trust that you're going to do it. Okay. So you are going to write. That is all you've got to do for the rest of Wit and Wisdom today. I want you to write and then keep it because you're going to turn it in to me after we get back from break. Got it? So write it here, keep it, put it in your folder and return it to me after break. And that's all we're doing today. So have a fantastic morning.